All right, we have created our regression. We've included categorical data. We've got a really good model down here that we like. Um, there's one way that we can improve this even further. You might remember in another chapter that we talked about uh, there being a problem when we have data that are skewed or that are not normally distributed. Let me give you one simple example of how we can adjust this and make it better. I'm going to come here to charges, insert, and I'm going to make a new version of charges. We call this one charges ln. So uh, we can make mathematical transformations, basically is what I'm saying, that will improve the shape of this histogram right here. So to, to fix a right skewed histogram, we have various strengths of changes we can make. A natural log is the most extreme or a logarithmic change. We can also do a, a square root or a cube root um, to make a change. So let's, let's actually make all of these. Insert, insert, and I'll show you the difference between them. I'm gonna call this charges, square root, charges, cube root. So you can see how this changes. So this is the histogram for charges original. Now let's go ahead and convert. So right here, all I'm going to do is take charges and get the square root of it. So I'm going to raise it to the one half. Over here, let's get the cube root of charges equals charges raised to the one third. And then lastly, right here, notice how the numbers are getting progressively smaller and make a logarithmic transformation. I'm going to say this equals ln, which is natural log of charges. And that's the smallest. So let's copy these down. And uh, I want to show you what the histograms look like. So I'm going to select charges square root, insert histogram. I'm going to put this back up top right next to the other one. Uh, you know, I should probably move these back over here. I'm going to put this one right here. I'm going to get rid of this guy and move this over. Oops. Try and keep this as clean as I can. This one is our, oops, there we go. This is our histogram for charges square root. Sorry, I know you can't see that. Let me move over a bit. And look what's already happening. So by taking the square root of those values, and as long as the transformation is the same or applied the same to every value so that it's not biased, I can make these types of transformations. It's not a problem. Um, and what this does is it's starting to push this lump closer to the middle. But is, is that still skewed? Yes, it is. And how do I know? Well, I can actually calculate the skewness of these things. So you might remember this from another chapter. I'm going to say this equals skew of this data, enter. All right, 1.51. It's outside the negative one to one cutoff, meaning it's too skewed. So let's do this one. Equals skew of this array. All right, we're inside the bounds of acceptable skewness. But just because we're inside the bounds doesn't mean that we have to stop there. Closer to zero is better, right? So let's go ahead and do another one. Equals skew. All right, now we're down to 0.51, closer to zero. Let's do the most extreme uh, correction, a natural log. Or check and see what it looks like. All right, we passed zero, but this is by far the closest one to zero. So let's see how these other histograms played out. Let's grab charges cube root, insert histogram, cut that. Put it over here next to the others. All right, looking even better, right? That, that tall, that lump is moving closer and closer to the middle. Come on, let me do that. Oops. 
just call this charges cube root. I don't have to put histogram on there each time. And then finally, let's grab the one for charges ln. I'm going to start from the bottom. Charges natural log. All right, good enough. Natural, that's fine. Okay. See how these transformations, it started very right skewed, still somewhat right skewed, less right skewed, but still a longer tail over here. And then this one, now we have this lump here at the end that doesn't look quite right, but this is a lot more normal looking than anything else. We haven't fully figured out what's going on with that one right there, but overall this is not too bad. Okay, let's, let's redo our model this time using charges ln as our, as our dependent variable. So I'm going to data uh, analysis, regression, and all I got to do is change my y range from L to O. Remember, don't use the arrow key. And then let's output below the others we were working on right here. All right, here's what it does to my model. Let's take a look. R squared, it's gone up. Uh, my p-values and coefficients, these should look really close to the same. Uh, what am I looking for here? Home, number, expand that a little bit. Okay, now look what happened. When, sorry, I meant they should look close to the same relative to each other. But look what happened to my scale. This is the slope for the effect of smoker on charges. Well, the scale of charges has dropped dramatically. It now ranges from about 7 to 11 or so, or something like that. And so naturally the coefficient or the slope is going to be drastically reduced as well. Um, we never talked about this negative sign here for, for, for sex. Now, notice that now the p-value for sex is actually significant once we've fixed this skewness issue with charges. Uh, and this negative sign simply means with a dichotomous variable at zero one, it just means that uh, uh, women, because they're the lower number in our coded data, they're the zero, women cost more than men. That's how I interpret that. And if, if uh, because smoker is positive, one, a zero means no smoking and a one means yes. That means that uh, smoker, um, people who do smoke cost more than those who don't. That's why that's positive. Uh, age, BMI and children, these are all positive. As they go up, charges go up. Okay, so we have a uh, much more, um, we have a more accurate model. R squared went up just a little bit, but what this is going to do for our predictions is going to be fantastic. Now remember these numbers. I want to actually keep them so we can remember what they are. the paste values. And then let's adjust the predictions to work off of, oh, all I need to do is come down here, grab the new coefficients. I'm going to paste these over the top of our old ones. Um, looks like I'll start it over here, smoker through, I think I'm just going to delete those. Oh, I hit delete and so I got to recopy them into memory. Smoker through children. Paste transpose. Get rid of the borders. Okay. And so my predicted value, I've got to adjust this instead of working off of these. Oh, it looks like I forgot to adjust this before, too, when I came up. Oh, yeah, because we didn't do it. That's fine. There we go. 
Uh, let's see here. Enter. Did I forget to? No, that looks right. What did I forget to do here? Oh, I've got to uh, change my y-intercept. Can't forget that. So the y-intercept value is no longer that one. It's changed quite a bit. It is going to be this one down here, much smaller intercept. There we go. There we go. All right, so if we're going to calculate uh, RMSE and MAE, we're going to need to put the prediction back into the original charges scale. So uh, our, I'm kind of wishing I'd save the old predictions, but that's OK. I'm going to take this. And what we need to do is the way to reverse a natural log is to do E raised to the natural log. So in Excel, that's EXP wrapped around that whole thing right there. That'll be E raised to that value. There we go. Copy and paste that down. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I got to put the uh, dollar sign in front of the row so it stays there. Now I'll paste that down. There we go. So you may not remember this, but last time this uh, predicted value was like 6,000 something and the actual value is almost 17,000. Look how much closer we got. Now, this is partly due. I realized that we, I didn't go back and adjust it after we came up with this model in the prior video that included all the categorical variables. However, um, it, it's improved regardless. So here, look at what's happened to our MAE and our RMSE. Both have gone down. These are measures of error. Both look a lot better. So uh, when it's time to come up with our prediction calculator, uh, we'll have much more accurate ways of, of, of predicting. So notice also over here, remember this model? Remember when we first did this and we predicted insurance charges would be negative and it's because age was skewed? Well, uh, that problem will be fixed now because age is uh, and charges have been skew corrected. Anyway, let's stop this one here as a video on how to do, how to incorporate fixing normality and making mathematical corrections, and then we'll make the prediction calculator in the next one.